Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So a lot has happened since the last time I've posted. I know I went a little AWOL. That was just because I was going through the college process and I got really busy. But here we are and I got into college. I'm actually a Posse Scholar, which is why we're here today. I'm going to tell you guys a little bit more about the Posse Scholarship. Is it worth it? The experience and how I got the interviews. And I'm gonna give you all the tips and tricks you need to pass those interviews and get the scholarship. So the biggest question I've been getting is, what is the Posse Scholarship? So the Posse Scholarship is a tuition-based scholarship and it is also leadership and merit-based. So first let's get into the factor of what the Posse Scholarship is and then we'll get into the factors of the eligibility and the requirements. So the Posse Scholarship, like I said before, is tuition-based. This means you will end up paying for your room and board and any travel fees. And most importantly, Posse is not like every single state doesn't have it. It is, I think it's 10 cities. I'll, I'll list them here. I don't remember them by heart, but I do know LA, Chicago, and New York City are one of the three cities. Another important thing about the Posse scholarship is that each Posse state or city, I can say, has different Posse partner schools. So for instance, New York City has 12 Posse partner schools. This means that this scholarship is not transferable to any school besides the 12 listed here. One last really important thing about the Posse scholarship is that you will be in a Posse, which means you and nine other kids will get this scholarship. So that is a total of 10 kids going to one of the selected schools that you have chosen. And then all throughout um, I think it's from January until the summertime. You go to weekly sessions, you get to know everybody, you get to hang out, you become like a little group of friends. And they really focus on a tight knit community because the Posse Scholarship believes that if you go into college with a group of friends that are there for you and are pushing you to try your hardest, you will succeed. You're really big on community and you like to have someone by your side and you like to be there for others. This is a great scholarship for you. So now that you know a little bit about what the Posse Scholarship is, let's talk eligibility. So the Posse Scholarship is actually really interesting in the fact that it is merit-based and leadership-based. So obviously they're gonna look at your grades, but I think the minimum requirement of a GPA is a 2.0. So they do give you some wiggle room there. So the main thing that they're looking for is that you are a leader in your community and that you work well with others. And they want to see how you work with others and how you fit into a community because remember the posse motto is about community and really much about how you can improve yourself and others within the college space before your first round of interviews they actually ask you to upload a piece of writing and it can be they don't give you a page limit which is amazing so you can upload any piece of writing that speaks to your academic ability or to your creative writing skills anything that best represents who you are. Another thing that makes the Posse Scholarship so unique is the fact that they conduct three rounds of interviews. This means that you have to get through all three rounds to get the scholarship. And I know it sounds pretty frightening at first, but all the interviews are really low key and they just wanna see how you work with others, if you're a good communicator, if you stand out. So let's get into the interview process and let's start with DAP1. So DAP stands for Dynamic Assessment process it sounds a lot scarier than it actually is so let's see let's go into the first interview the first interview can actually be a little more frightening than the other ones simply because it starts with a pool of a hundred or so kids and they break you down into smaller groups and they kind of just give you like activities assessments prompts to talk about so in my experience because of covid and the pandemic my interviews were virtual this year so it was a little less frightening than in person but i do believe they will go back to being in person next year considering that well for new york city at least considering that a lot of new york city things are opening up so for my interview process for dap one it was scary <laughs> considering that i was in a zoom call with like a hundred other kids there were so many staff members posse has so many staff members and all I what I remember, oh, let me let me figure out the time day. I have everything written down in my other book. Let me get my other notebook. So DAP 1 usually happens between August and September. So it happens really early on in the school year. I think mine was like September 20th or maybe no, no, no. Mine was in September because October was when the second round of interviews happened. 
If you want to stand out in these interviews, you have to start communication with kids. That's kind of what they want to see. They want to see that you can click with others fast, that you can have a conversation, that you have like a spark within, within community spaces. Because mine was virtual, they put us into breakout rooms and they gave us little prompts. And it was like five to six kids in a breakout room, which is a lot of breakout rooms, honestly, because there was a hundred kids at first. So they put us into little groups and then they gave us prompts. They were like, um, what are your thoughts on body positivity movement and the way that the media portrays it? What are your thoughts on gun control and gun reform? What are your thoughts on diversity and inclusion in schools? So they're going to purposefully give you these meaty questions because they want to see how you can interact in a space with other kids. They want to see how you're going to react if someone disagrees. They want to see you build on other kids' ideas. And one of the best things I could tell you to do during the interview process is remember kids' names. You don't want to be that kid who's there like, um, adding on to what she says or what they said or what he said. No, you want to know their names. The best thing about virtual was that you could see everyone's name on Zoom. So if you're in person, remember these kids' names and say, adding on to what Stacy said, adding on to what Camila said. That is the best thing that you could do because it, because they see that you're paying attention and they see like, oh, this kid is really interacting. And don't be afraid to disagree within these spaces. You don't have to agree with everyone. You don't have to be like, you have to be respectful. Let's, let's keep it nice. But you don't have to like constantly be in agreement with everyone. They kind of just want to see how you're interacting. So you can respectfully disagree with someone, of course. After they had us do like the small group interviews, they brought us all back together in the main room. So if you were in person, I'm guessing they would bring you all to like a classroom or something like that. And they gave us a writing assignment. <laughs> it give you like 30 to 40 minutes to kind of just write out everything. And because mine was virtual again, they gave us like until they gave us like two extra hours to submit it online. But obviously, if you're in person, you kind of just write what you can and you hand it in. My, what I can tell you, like my biggest tip for this, just write. Please, like if you're a planner, you get like 30 minutes. 30 minutes and you have to write, write as much as you can, honestly, because it's a little hard to get them to know you within that first session, considering there's a hundred kids, that's a hundred applications that they're going to see. You need to stand out. For you to stand out, you just have to, especially with the writing, just write everything you can. So if your question is about community, write every moment about community that you remember, anything you've done in the past, any clubs, extracurriculars, anything you can remember, just write it down on that paper. So after your first interview is over, they get back to you within, I think, two to three weeks because the next interview, the next set of interviews happen like a month apart. So you will know by the beginning of like November if you're going to the second round of interviews. After your first interview, let's say you made it, you aced it, you did amazing, you added on to other kids, you participated as much as you could, you got your voice out there. Comes Thanksgiving, you got your second interview. What should you be expecting? The second round of interviews is much different than your first round because after your first round, they kind of got to see how you interact with others and how you fit in a group setting. So now for your second round, they just want to get to know you. They want to know who you are as a person and they just kind of want to pick your brain a little bit. Before your second round of interviews, they actually give you the option to upload anything that speaks to your character. So if you're an artistic person, they let you upload a piece from your portfolio. You could upload a poem. Um, I'm trying to think. I was kind of stuck when I got to this point because I didn't have a poem to upload. I didn't have like a piece of art to upload or like a piece of creative writing that best represented me. This is completely um, optional as well. But this is the main thing to remember when you're, when you're, um, what's the word? When you're, when you're, when you're applying, when you're applying to any scholarship, any school, when you're doing anything, the word optional does not mean optional. The word optional means if you do this, you are going to be ahead of everyone else. It gives you a chance to showcase yourself in the best light. If you ever see the word optional, don't, don't look at that word. You're going to do it. You want the best chance at something. 
You're going to do everything they ask of you. You're going to give them as much information about you as you can. So obviously when I saw this upload button, I was like, damn, I don't have a piece of art. I don't have a poem. I don't have a creative writing. So what did I do? I don't know where I got this idea from. I was just kind of like, well, they said upload anything. So I made a little video. I made like, it was like a one, it was like a one minute and 30 second video. I kind of just went around my community taking pictures of like things I've done, places I've actually um, volunteered at, like the food pantry, the library. I actually went to my local park and I had like my little track suit on and I was like, this is where I run track. <laughs> and I personally think that's like one of the best things that I did because when I was in my second interview between me and my two other, like the two people who were interviewing me, they were like, the first thing they said to me, it was so embarrassing. They were like, we loved your video. <laughs> you guys have to understand. It was like, it, was, it wasn't awkward, but it was awkward. I was like, hi, I, this is where I volunteer. It was, it was cute. Let, let me just put it that way. So always think outside of the box. If a video is going to be, if you think a video will best represent you and just kind of like showing off your character, showing off what you're interested in, do it. Do what's best for you because you want them to see as much of you as you possibly can. They ask like pretty baseline questions. Tell me about your family. Tell me about where you grew up. Tell me about your academic career. So they kind of want to know your life like from elementary to high school, like your friends, hobbies, extracurriculars, things like that. And they're just writing everything down just like, hmm, hmm, that's very interesting. It's also important to note that you will submit your transcript. I think by your first round of interviews, let me tell you a really embarrassing story. Okay, so I hate science. I hate math. I hate them so, so, so much. My first fresh freshman year, they put me in chemistry. They, how are you gonna put a freshman, how old are you in freshman year, like 14 years old? How are you gonna put a 14 year old in chemistry? They, they wanted me to fail. They were preying on my downfall, not my fault. That being said, I got a 93 in that class. So tell me why I got a 73 on the Regents. And the reason why I'm telling you guys this story is because when I was in my second round interviews, the lady goes, looking at my transcript, hmm, it says here you got a 73 on your chemistry regions. Can you explain why? Y'all, I was so embarrassed. First of all, because chemistry was in freshman year. I'm a senior now. I was, I was so confused. I was like, 73, 73. And then I was like, oh, you mean the regents, like the like the exam. This is an important story to tell because like I said before, although Posse is like leadership based, they do want to see like academic potential. That does not mean you have to have A's in every single class. It just kind of means that they want to see that you're showing growth and that you want to learn. So if you have a bad grade or like a bad test grade, have an answer prepare yourself beforehand. So when they asked me why I did so bad on the exam, I kind of told them I was a freshman taking chemistry, a class with majority juniors and sophomores, and I felt very intimidated and I didn't want to speak up for myself. And you kind of just want to list all these reasons. The most important thing when you're backing up a bad grade, you have to say why you did bad and what you did and what you're going to do to do better. That is the most important thing because you cannot just say, yeah, I did bad because so-and-so and just leave it like that, no. So what I did was I said, oh, I had a lot of trouble speaking up for myself, kind of like asking for help. I felt really insecure, but when I, and then you always have to lead on with, but. So, but when I took AP Bio my sophomore year, I learned that I have to try harder. I went to office hours. I spoke with the teacher. I went to tutoring. And these kind of things just show them that you're trying and you have academic potential, that you have the ability to fail, pick yourself up and succeed. 
So that's kind of one of the most important things during these second round interviews. You just kind of want to show off who you are and what you're doing to get better if you ever did bad in a class, what you're looking forward to do, and just kind of things like that. Another really big tip during the second round of interviews is because it's only between you and two other staff members, it's really important to create a bond. So for instance, in my case, I'm an SEO scholar and my interviewer, pretty funnily enough, was also an SEO scholar. And we kind of bonded over that. And when I sent a thank you email, always send a thank you email when, you, when it's between you and an interviewer. It just kind of shows that you care, that you're listening, that you like hope for the best. So in my thank you email, I was like, thank you so much for the opportunity to like have this interview with me. I'm so happy to hear that you're a former SEO scholar. So you can kind of do this with anything. So let's say you're into baking and your interviewer is like, oh, I'm into baking too. You best talk about baking for a little bit. You don't got to focus the whole interview on baking, but just be like, what's your favorite thing to bake? Or, oh, I do sports. I do soccer, basketball. And they're like, me too. You kind of just want to bond over one thing for like a little bit because it helps them remember you and just kind of like keep you in the back of their head. And so it's really important to, to make that connection with your interviewer just because it helps them remember you in the future. And it's just really good for you and your own exposure. This, this is important. So depending how many schools yet your city or wherever you are that Posse is partnered with, I think you get to choose five schools that you want to attend and you rank them based from one to like five, I think. I only rank three schools. I rank Middlebury as my number one, Franklin, no, Lafayette as, no, Franklin and Marshall as two, Lafayette as three. And you kind of have to rank them and then give your reasoning why. So this, this is really important because when you're giving your reasoning, you can't just be like, oh, I want to go to Middlebury because it's close to home. That they want to see that you did your research, that you're 100% sure that you're going to go to the school. So kind of like what I said, I was like, I want to go to Middlebury College because of the Rotten Center. And I really like how this center gives internships to kids and focuses on conversations about global politics and how they have conventions and how they have conventions giving exposure for these global issues. And you have to kind of do that for every single school. So, so for every school that you list, you kind of just want to pick out one detail, whether it's a program, a professor, um, something that you're really excited about, and just kind of say, I want to go here because. You don't want to be vague. You want to be very specific. Unfortunately, though, Posse is a little weird. And let's say you rank all your five schools. So um, let's use my example again, Middlebury, Lafayette, Franklin, and Marshall. So after your second round of interviews, they're going to look at your rankings and they're going to say, I know this kid ranked Middlebury as number one, but honestly, they seem like a much better fit for Franklin and Marshall, or I think they're really going to thrive at Lafayette. So although you get to choose your rankings, ultimately your interviewers get to choose where you go. And that kind of sucks because if you put your, your first, like, let's say if I put Middlebury as number one and they put me in my number three, I was I was gonna be sad but I <laughs> it kind of sucks but you just kind of have to be open to that idea and to the idea that they kind of know best but the last part of your second round of interviews they kind of ask you explain to me your ranking so at this point you kind of want to be there like I ranked Middlebury as number one because and you kind of want to expand on that and you have to do that on every single school make your case because remember how I said, they get to choose what school you go to ultimately. If you really wanna to go to your number one school, you have to put like so much emphasis on that. You have to do the research, you have to do the work, you have to do everything you can to possibly show them, this is the school I wanna to go to, this is the best fit for me, and this is why. That is the end of your second round of interviews and they will get back to you, I think, I think it's again like two to three weeks they get back to you and when they do this is scary because they will tell you what school they chose you for they're gonna say hi you are a finalist for blank school it's really important because let's say they put you in a school that you didn't necessarily like so let's say your first ranking was babson and they put you in like your fourth ranking depar or something if you really don't want to go to that school and you're completely against it you have the option to tell them no, thank you. Uh, I love this opportunity, but the school is not for me. I will be rejecting the scholarship. 
and you just don't go to your final interview round. So now that we talked a little bit about the two rounds of interviews and kind of how all that works, let's go into our final interview round. And after that, we'll move on to some of the benefits. So you got to the first round, you got the second round, you're on your final round of interviews. Let's talk about DAP number three. So this is when everything gets really real. You are a posse finalist. This is a really big moment. And usually this round of interviews happens within early December, mid-December. It's a really big deal. So let's talk a little bit about DAP number three. Before you go into your interview, you do have to sign some legal documents. Kind of scary. It's kind of saying just, if I get accepted, I will go to the school. Yes, I'm legally binded. So the last interview is kind of like your first interview where it's a big group interview, except this time you are against 20 students important to say so for the first round of interviews it was kind of like show your personality show who you are show how you can contribute in a group setting the second round of interviews was kind of like um tell me a little bit more about yourself about your lifestyle your academic career your hobbies this interview round is a little more personal because they kind of want you to get vulnerable they want you to be vulnerable really fast and it's kind of hard because it's not kind of hard it is hard because you don't know these kids you've never seen these kids in your life maybe you remember them from the other interviews but you don't know them and they want you to get vulnerable real fast they're going to ask you some of uh, they're going to ask you some really hard hitting questions and honestly my best advice is get comfortable with being uncomfortable so this means like they're going to be like oh when what was a time of your life when you struggled immensely and how did you overcome it? What you kind of want to do is really get vulnerable with everybody, which is really hard to do. It's a really big expectation, I know, but you kind of just want to tell your story and it's a really hard thing to do. So really mentally prepare yourself for that before you get to that moment because it's a three hour long interview. It's very exhausting, very draining, but it's really worth it. So aside from being vulnerable, they also want to see you be open and just kind of like have fun with everybody. That's a really important aspect, having fun. Like in my group, my group was really nice. I really love the kids I got into a breakout room with because it was me and I think four other students. We had a really nice time just like talking, sharing our stories. And two of the kids, they both worked at museums and they were just kind of bonding over that and i'm pretty sure the the interviewer saw that and we were all just joking around we were like oh when are you gonna get us tickets to go to the brooklyn museum you gotta hook us up give us like all those good details give us a little tour and we were just having fun and like throwing some like jokes back and forth and the interviewer saw that and surprisingly enough everyone who was in my breakout room not everyone one girl didn't get it but four of us got the scholarship the four of us that were joking around having fun just bouncing jokes back and forth we got in we got the scholarship and that that was really that was incredibly like stunning because out of the 20 kids four of us in the breakout room got that so that segment goes on for like about an hour you just kind of like speed through questions they just ask you like about your home life about your struggles challenges things you want to improve on things you look forward to do in college and during and it's important to note that in this last interview process the admissions officer from whatever school you're going to be attending to is there there they might just pop into your breakout room or if you're in person they're just going to be walking around and all that so keep a lookout <laughs> you don't want to embarrass yourself in front of them but just of course have fun whenever you have these opportunities to let your personality shine through really take advantage of it that's really quite it's really what they want to see to say that was the most nerve-wracking day of my life i was so scared i was i was completely sure i was not going to get that scholarship i wanted to cry i was like damn there's so much more i should have said and let me just say do not psych yourself out keep that confidence going the entire way of the scholarship the entire way of the interview it is really important to just be confident in yourself and your person and what you're putting out there because you know yourself better than everyone else you just have to have that confidence like yes this scholarship is for me i have this i got this i can do this 
just constantly reassure yourself because it really is going to play a really big part at the end. They can easily see where your confidence lies and how much you really want this scholarship. So now let's get into some of the questions that I got asked. So the first question I got asked was, what are the benefits of Posse? So for me, the biggest benefit is community, simply because I'm going to Middlebury in Vermont, six hours away from New York City. That is, that's so scary. That is the scariest thing that I could possibly think of. I'm also a first generation student. That is even scarier. Oh my God. God, this is like, it's so fucking scary. And do, going through the, the college process is hard. Being in college, a different separate amount of hardness. So for me, just knowing that I have a community to fall back on, it's amazing. This is like a community of friends, a community of people who are there to reassure you, help you move forward, help you get through anything you need to get through emotionally, academically, socially. These are your people. I'm gonna put a little picture here of my posse. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay, we're, mm, I love them. I love them all so much. Um, they've helped me through a lot and I've only known them for like, like five months, four months, since January. And we've been talking every single day since January. And it's been really helpful, you know, just like just sharing that kind of fear and just kind of reassuring each other that everything's going to be okay when we get to college and that we don't really have to be scared. It's really nice. And just knowing that you're going to college with a group of friends, it's such a great feeling. Like I'm going to Vermont. That's so far away. I'm going to get there and I'm going to say, you know what? It's okay. I'm scared. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. But I have all these friends that I can go to if I need something. So that's one benefit. The second benefit is just like networking. So Posse has like all these different things. Like I think in January, January through June, they give you like pre-collegiate training. So they kind of just get you into the college mindset. They kind of just help you out. They're like, oh, this is kind of the challenges you're gonna face in college. This is how you overcome them. In addition to that, we are also given like writing sessions. So they help us with our resume. They help us um, do career workshops. They kind of give us um, different options and different outlets. And they're like, oh, hey, this is the person you go to when you need your resume to be looked over. This is the person you go to when you need, a, when you wanna find like a certain type of career, when you need to talk to somebody. And that in itself is really amazing and really nice. And we also have our own financial aid officer. And it's just really nice to have all these different materials and all these different places to go to if you ever need help. And there's another great benefit is that there's a posse group in every grade. And it's really nice to just know someone there on campus already. So I know my group, we have like the upperclassmen, like the freshmen who are there now. They've been in contact with us. They've been talking to us. They're like, hey, when you get here, hit us up if you need anything. Like this is what the situation here. You can find this here. It's just really helpful, you know, because in my posse right now, we're scrambling we're screwed it's so fucking scary but just knowing that they're there and that they're there to help us it's amazing it's so heartwarming so here are some final thoughts uh if you got nominated and you really and you like any of the schools please continue on like do the interview process it's scary it's really hard there's a lot of fear going into it a lot of insecurity unsureness just do it because let's say you get to the third round if you really don't think it's right for you, you can shut it down. But it's better to have your options open than to have no options at all. So really, I encourage everyone who got nominated to continue on with this process, unless you really hate the schools. But <laughs> I hope you all get in. I hope if, just do your hardest, do, tr try your hardest, because it is an amazing opportunity and good luck. So if you guys have any more questions, feel free to DM me on Instagram. I can make another video if there's a lot of questions to answer. And I have my socials. I have Instagram. My handle is Shayla underscore C, I think. My TikTok is going to be right here. I'll link everything down below. Don't worry. But thank you so much for listening. I hope I didn't bore you guys because I did talk a lot. 
but I really look forward to the summertime. I'm going to be filming more vlogs. I will be filming a lot more during the summertime, I promise. And that's a wrap. So thank you so much for joining me. Bye, guys.